Ooh! And I don't force anybody in my life to do anything for me. Don't even talk to me. Ooh, Ooh I like that it's a little brush. I was wrong. I'm filming right now watching Woman of Impact on YouTube. And this is the episode, How to Find Your Worth, Let Go of Shame, and Own Your Value with Sarah Jakes Roberts. And listen to this part right here. I had to rewind it and turn the camera on because you need to hear this. Like, she's talking about betrayal. Wowzers. Growth. And, um, you know, not every person in your family can feed you. Not every person in your family can help you promote growth. And to create an environment for you. I'm giving wild bat eyes because I agree with this so much. I agree with this when it comes to family, just just everything. Just not everyone in your life can feed you. For you to incubate hope. Some people are blowing your Let's go back. Smoke growth. And to create an environment for you to incubate hope. Some people are blowing your candle out while you're trying to get the flame going. Come on. Okay? Come and on. So to understand that like if I'm writing a book and I have someone who doesn't think that I'm smart or yep. that it's silly, no one's gonna buy your book. Yep. And I can't talk to my to, about my book to them. No. I understand based off of my interactions and engagements what boundaries I need, even when it comes yep. to family, because it does hurt. Not my camera dying when the Lord was speaking. I'm annoyed. Yo, I'm just yelling because this is so good. And we've talked about this. And if you missed it, let's just touch on it a few, just touch a few more points on this again. Because not everybody is a supporter of yours. And we talked about this in the jealousy video, the chit chat you ready with me about jealousy and bitterness and envy. You got to watch it. But not everyone can support you. And many times we want a certain person to support us. Well, if that person cannot or refuses to, cannot because they don't have the emotional wherewithal, cannot because they're immature in whatever way, or just refuses to because they just don't feel like it, because it's not by force. It is literally not by force. And I don't force anybody in my life to do anything for me. I'm not the kind of person to be all like, well, you're my friend, you supposed to, you ain't supposed to do nothing. You ain't supposed to do nothing for me. You know why? Because you can do whatever you want to do. You will do whatever you want to do. I don't hold anything over anybody. I used to. Not anymore. And that's not pessimistic. It's just I don't force anybody or manipulate anybody to do anything. You know how you might be all like, well, you're my friend. You should have called me. You're my friend. You should have done this. You know, it will Musa, but I just stopped doing that. If you do that, then fine. Everyone should do what they please. But I, Menadibia, I just don't do those things anymore because people are going to do what they want to do. And I've just grown to allow people to do what they want to do. And if they want to do something, they will do it for me. And if they don't want to do something, they won't do it for me. And I'm okay either way. I am honestly okay either way. The corner tell you that you shouldn't be in the fight in the first place. Engagements, what boundaries I need, even when it comes to family, because it does hurt to have someone who's supposed to be in your corner tell you that you shouldn't be in the fight in the first place. And there's, I'll tell you this, there's even a way where someone can tell you that I don't think this is your fight without damaging you in the process, right? Mm. Because not everyone has to agree with you. I'm not talking yeah. about having yes men, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm talking about people who know how to even steer you in a different direction with grace and kindness in your heart and soul and mind. Yet people who are just like that brutally honest, I don't believe in that. I don't think that's cute. Being yeah. brutally, and you can be honest without being brutal because yeah. at the end of the day, there's a person it's not connected cute. to it. Yeah. And so really understanding who in my family is qualified to help me with this part of my life. Yeah. was just a great babysitter. Yeah. Because not everyone's qualified. <laughs> yes. I'm yelling. I'm yelling. Because here's the thing. Many times we expect, let's just say one person, right? Many times we expect one person to be able to do everything for us, for that person to be the funny, let's just say it's a friend, 
for that person to be the funny friend, the friend that can bail us out when we, when we, you know, overdraft, we need some money. The friend who can hear us, hear, listen to our worries and give us the therapeutic help. The friend who can come babysit our kids. The friend to travel with. The friend to go on dinners with. The friend to be on the phone with. It's like not every person in our lives can do and be everything that we may need. Like, come on. It's just unreasonable to expect for, let's just say, one person to be able to fill all of those examples of categories. I believe in that. I do believe in certain people being in our lives for certain reasons. You know, you might have uh, someone in your life who is a great money mentor. You might, ha and that, that same person might not be a great person to talk to when you want to vent. You might have someone in your life who is great to talk to when you are upset, need advice, what have you. But then that person may not be the kind of person you travel with. You might have friends that you always travel with. They down to travel. They passport ready, honey. They are TSA approved. You know what I'm saying? And they got the money in the bank. They are ready to travel. But they may not be the same friends who want to go with you to the Woman Evolve Conference, okay? To go worship the Lord. They may not be the same friends to walk with you on your spiritual journey, but they're great friends to travel with. And that's that. I do believe in there being different categories of people in our lives. And that is okay. I used to feel like certain people needed to be the person I can talk to about what I'm learning in podcasts and then also be the kind of person I can talk to about just day-to-day -day superficial things and then also be the kind of person that I can laugh with and do the x y and z with and some people just don't have the capacity to do that not everyone is interested not everyone is at that level and you may just, like I said, have friends for different reasons. These are my party friends. These are my church friends. These are my travel friends. This is my friend that I talk to and vent with. These, these are my parent friends who have children. These are my married friends. These are my work friends. Whatever it is. And it can be friends, family, whatever the case is. And I've learned that that honestly and truly is okay. That is okay. I, don't need, I can't be filling every bucket for somebody. And I'm not going to have somebody that can fill every bucket it for me and that is okay and properly is really important i love that so much because just because you make an amazing potato salad doesn't mean that you've got a great idea about my business no. right no, right to see you at the cookout that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's what i'm saying important actually because i think that if we respect people mm -hmm. it, then at least for me if i respect someone i used to think oh well it means i have to listen to them no. right right and all you have to do really is make sure that they feel like they have got their voice out. But you don't have to take what they say. Yeah. And make it a party. <laughs> you ever listen to someone because they just are on a diatribe when they feel like what they're saying is important. But you already know in the back of your head that you're not going to even pay attention to what they're saying. Like you just want to let them just talk. Like, okay, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well. And in your head you're like, bye. That does happen. But uh, what I want to say, yeah. Not everybody is meant to speak into my life. Meaning, I'm not going to listen to what everybody got to say about me or about whatever. I do know that God speaks through people. Yeah. But ain't every people. And it ain't even every person of God. You see, that's why the Lord says to test every spirit. Hello. But not only that, not every friend. Like, you know, your party friends may not be the ones you want to go to for relationship advice. You see what I'm saying? Your travel friends might not might not be the ones you want to go to to talk about a book that you're reading. Just just examples. You see, hold on, is that my Walmart girls? We've let praise the Lord. Yes, they're here. Finally, they are late. <laughs> what happened today? Are you guys busy? What's going on? Looks like you're busy. The way I handle it is because I learned from the past. I learned from a childhood friendship that I had where I was very wrapped into her relationship to the point where, again, it was one of the reasons why our relationship disintegrated because of her relationship with that guy. It was one of the reasons why. Because I was way too involved. I wanted her to leave him, and she never did. So I learned from that that I was wrong. I was wrong. 
wrong for getting in the, in the relationship. And I also was out of line when I allowed her to continue to vent to me. I should have had the knowledge to say, listen, I want you to stop. Look, I told you. I love you and I want to hear you out. I'm having a hard time supporting you because hearing this makes me upset. So when we talk, I want to avoid discussing you and your man. I didn't have that self-awareness at that time, but now I do. So now I do make those boundaries. There's got to be boundaries. If I'm finding myself in arms listening to you talk about a certain topic that you have proven to me that you are not going to do anything about <laughs> or anything about it that's to my satisfaction, <clears throat> It is with well within my rights as a human being, as a human being, to request of you that when we speak, we no longer speak about this topic. It is well within my human right <clears throat> to say it just like I just said it to you. Love you so much. Want to support you. Here for you. But got to be honest, each time we discuss this topic, I really feel X, Y, Z. And as a result, I've decided that I would like to not talk about this topic any further. Why? Because as I mentioned, I love you very much. And I'm having a hard time separating what's going on with you and our relationship because I can't lie to you. It is bothering me. And I find myself ruminating over it even after our conversations. And I understand that you have to do what is best for you at your own time. So I'm asking you if when Whenever we speak, we cannot speak about this topic. Thoughts on that? And then let her respond. Oh, but I, I mean, I just need someone to talk to. I understand that. And I feel like we have exhausted this conversation. I can't imagine anything else I could share regarding it. I have to be honest. Again, like I said, I'm a human being. And I find myself really getting emotionally involved in this topic. And I do understand you need someone to talk to. I have a therapist. I really strongly recommend that you get a therapist and really speak to someone that is unbiased that can help you in this area can you understand that end of topic and if she continues to bring it up bring it up bring it up bring it up i'm just gonna answer your phone calls less and less or remind you hey listen i am so sorry i understand i really do understand like i said this is a difficult topic for me to listen to because i cannot separate my emotions and i really want to support you but i really want you to get therapy talk to a therapist because this is really a conversation for a therapist i am not in the position to be able to support you at this level if the person cannot respect that then the person is manipulative and then she gotta go that's how i would handle it i think one of the reasons you absorb other people's emotions is having a low emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize and manage your own emotions and recognize the emotions of others with high emotional intelligence, you're able to distinguish between your emotions and someone else's. Making that distinction is really important if you don't want to take on someone else's emotions and make them your own. To recognize your emotions, you must have a certain degree of self-awareness. And it's one thing to recognize that you feel bad, but bad is vague and nonspecific. You can feel bad because you're angry, insulted, bored, or feel empty. And all of those emotions are very different from one another, but can be put under the umbrella of bad. So at, at any given time, if you're not clear on how something affects you, it's easy to take on the emotions of someone else and assume what they feel. Then, once you assume that other person's emotions, you have trouble managing it on your end. Here's an example. Suppose you're taking a break at work and you're sitting at your desk watching a funny TikTok video. Your coworker, who you consider a friend, comes up to you and starts ranting about how she's so angry because her boss gave her a bad review and she didn't get her raise. So she doesn't see how anyone can work in this place with this kind of boss who doesn't care about anyone. And she doesn't know how long she's gonna stick around at this place. Two minutes ago, you were laughing at the dog video you were watching, but now you feel overwhelmed with anxiety about your position at work. Should you stay in this job? Is it even a safe place to work? Later on that night, you have trouble sleeping because you may fear you may lose your job. Now, no one told you that your job is in jeopardy, but you just have this sense that maybe it is. Back at work, your friend settles down and you even see her laughing with your boss about something. 
So your anxiety subsides and you start to feel that all is well and things start to return to their usual, but you still lost a couple of weeks of poor sleep and feeling anxious. Now part two of this scenario is that this person is your friend and when she got this bad news, you're the only person she ranted to, probably because you're the only person who would listen. But if you're someone who doesn't always know what you feel or doesn't feel strongly about things, at some level, you may be attracted to people who have strong, clear opinions. It's not a deliberate process of saying to yourself, I don't know how I feel, so I feel whatever you do. Instead, it's an unconscious process, meaning that it's beyond your awareness that helps you deal with your own emotional uncertainty by assigning someone else's emotions to yours. It's unsettling to feel vague about how something affects you, and it's reassuring to have someone who's more resolved about how they feel swoop in and show you how to feel. And this is an automatic process that happens like a reflex. And what's the evidence for that? The fact that you keep attracting people with strong emotions that overwhelm you. You have to be drawn to them in some way. Another reason you may be drawn to people with strong emotions that overwhelm you is being a people pleaser or needing to fix people. If you don't want to disappoint someone, it's easy to take the handoff when they present their intense negative emotion to you. Here's an example of this. Suppose your partner tells you that he had this horrible thing happen to him where he felt exploited in some way, like people were taking advantage of him. And then he explodes about it and then storms off. You're left standing there feeling upset about what happened to him and you feel bad for him. Nevertheless, you have plans with your girlfriends to go to the movies later that evening. So you start to get dressed and he asks, where the heck do you think you're going? You remind him that you had plans with your girlfriends. He explodes at you about how could you even think about going out with your friends after what he's been through. If you cared anything about him, you wouldn't be able to go have fun. You think, gosh, I guess that is pretty insensitive of me to go out and have fun when he's so unhappy. So you cancel your plans. So to find something to do, because he's stormed off in, in a room by himself, you binge watch something on Netflix and fall asleep on the couch. You see him the next morning and he says he didn't get a, a wink of sleep all night and he doesn't believe you really care about him because how could you even sleep so peacefully after something like that happened to him? The rest of the day, you feel awful and think, maybe you don't care for your partner as much as you should. You convince yourself that you're insensitive and you wish you could be a better person. And you start thinking of ways that you could be a better partner to him. In this example, the people pleasing part of you puts up with his need to see you suffer so that he can feel validated. In fact, you don't see it that way. You really buy into his assertion that the evidence that you care about him is that you take on the same emotion that he has and experience it for as long as he does. And as long as he's unhappy, you should be unhappy as well. But because you don't want to disappoint him, you accept this assertion and own it. This scenario works a little differently for the person who wants to fix or help instead of please. So the same thing happens. He comes home and tells you about his upsetting experience that he had and you feel pain for him. He doesn't need to tell you not to go out with your friends because you're not in the mood anymore. You're so upset that you can't see yourself having fun with your girlfriends. Or if you do go, you spend the whole time with your girlfriends talking about his situation and how horrible those people were to him. Even if you don't take his side on the issue, you've taken on a project of healing him and you're gonna heal him through your love. But while you're working to heal him, you're also experiencing the emotions as if it happened to you. Now, these are not the only reasons that you can be an emotional sponge. We just looked at two reasons, but let's look at what you can do about this. The first thing is to increase your emotional intelligence. You start this by increasing your self-awareness. In a previous video, I talked about getting into the habit of being specific about what kinds of emotions you're experiencing at any given time. I created these emotions cards to help expand your vocabulary when it comes to identifying general emotions and being able to make them more specific. You can download these cards from my website at Mark Psychiatry. 
The second thing you can do is stop and think about whether what you're feeling is coming from you or is it because of the way someone else felt? Is the negative emotion you're experiencing something that was handed off to you by someone? Do you, did you only start feeling this way because the person you care about felt that way? And keep in mind, it's not always bad to empathize with someone and react the same way they did. That leads to the next thing that you can do, which is learn to manage your emotions so that they don't overwhelm you. And there's many ways to do this. One way is to practice mindfulness meditation. I have a video on managing negative emotions that includes a mindfulness exercise that helps you observe anger in a neutral way and accept it and let it pass. So the idea is that you don't have to run away from every negative emotion that you see coming, but you want to be able to build an emotional force field around you that allows you to be in the presence of, of negative emotions, observe them, interact with them, but keep them from piercing your soul and taking over your thoughts and behavior. The fourth tip would be to ensure that you have proper boundaries between yourself and others. Yes. Sometimes this is as concrete as having a physical distance. So in this example that I had of the coworker yelling at you about her experience, in that situation, it may be helpful to push back and let there be more physical distance between yeah. her and you. And it sounds very basic, but it really can make a difference. No, it's true. Watching someone rant from a distance is an entirely different experience than having them rant right in your face. Yep. It's as if the further away they are, the more that you can keep what they're experiencing separate from you. Yep. If they get too close into your personal space, you can lose sight of what's theirs and what's yours. Yeah. The last tip has to do with the need to save people. Mm. And there's different reasons you may do this. For some people, it helps give them a sense of control. You can take control of the negative things and make them positive. It could also be a way to distract from your own pain by focusing on someone else's pain. Mm. For some people, they need a damaged person to fix oh, as a God. way of making themselves feel validated. Oh, God. So there's lots of motivations uh, behind the need to save people, and it can get complicated. Mm. But suffice it to say that if you notice this pattern with yourself, it's worth taking a step back and reflecting on what you're getting out of it. What's the payoff to you to change the way this person thinks or to make all negative things positive? And I'm not talking about trying to save your child from experiencing the mm. pain of growing up. I'm talking about a pack. Yo, <clears throat> if that ain't good, then I don't know what is, okay? If that ain't good, then I don't know what is. Number one, let me also say this. <clears throat> When you're consuming your content, right, when you're following us influencers online, are you mixing in, okay, are you evaluating to be sure that what you're, oh my God, what time is my therapy appointment? Hold on. Are you evaluating what you're consuming in the sense oh, that are you only more. consuming entertainment? Are you only consuming gossip? Are you only consuming just trash are you consuming topics and discussions and videos that are edifying are you following someone that gives you all of it what are you consuming because i just feel like it's so important to be growing as a person wish you would i watched that video already but i just needed to br brush up on it and it was in my suggestions and i'm glad it was that is such a great topic I was playing for you a discussion I was having with a friend. It's it's via Marco Polo video chat app. And I just wanted to play that because what I talked about is so, so important. It was one of my many life-changing, altering, edifying experiences. And it related to this in a way. Yeah, in a way. But so good. I have therapy this afternoon. I'm about to film right now. My skin is feeling a little better. It's feeling very tight, which is part of the dryness it's just what happens i'll exfoliate later more than likely i'll exfoliate later got some dry skin right here but that's okay though to carry all victory perfection could never hurt it
do what you don't deserve it yo this is so random but i just got home from nini's lunch this dress is she and he messed up my shoulder i can't do it he he did something to my shoulder <laughs> This dress is Shein, honey. It was part of my haul that I did a while ago. I just got back from Nini's lunch, and this is so random, but I just have an itch to change my bag. I know. Just, like, strange, right? I have been carrying this one, which is great. Hands-free. But I just felt like uh, I want to change my bag. You know what it is? Because I had a shield on in the school. I have some stuff in here. And when I got back to my car, I didn't, like... It's not a huge deal, but I wasn't a fan of how I have the marks on my face. And in, first of all, check out this makeup. Skin is healing too. It looks really good. I didn't like the marks on my face. <clears throat> and clearly with a smaller bag, I can't touch up the marks because why? I don't have my touch up kit in that bag, baby. That touch up kit is not going to fit in this small bag. Like this bag is very small just get it get the job done type situation it's not put everything in your life in the bag <clears throat> so i'm just like you know what let me put this in here too i'm about to change my bag just because i feel like it praise lord so now i'm transferring my stuff <laughs> into this black bag i can't even stand it let's see i got a gloss up in here why do i have so much stuff that's the question that i know needs to be answered listen i've been challenging okay i do have this i've been challenging myself to i listen i have so much stuff i have duplicates in every bag so when i change my bag there really isn't much that i need to take out of one and put into the other that's a blessing in and of itself okay i've been challenging myself to to do what? What, what? what am I talking about right now? What am I trying to say to you right now? Oh, to dress up. Okay. So for the past few days, I've been wearing dresses. Listen, I shop a lot and I thank God for the ability to be able to do that. And I have a lot of clothes that a lot of times just sit around and I am not a fan of just feeling or looking frumpy. Mm, we talked about this a while ago. I work from home. Got to challenge myself to really put myself together every day. And I am up for the challenge. You know, I'm here for the challenge. I'm talking about it in a funny way, but I'm being serious. I am here for the challenge. I'm up for it. I'm the woman for the challenge. And I challenge you to do that if you are working from home. And if you feel like you just want to step things up. If you're comfortable being casual and whatever casual looks like for you on a day-to-day -day basis, do what works for you, boo-boo. But for me, I just like to dress up. It makes me feel happy. I like to look fancy. I'm not wearing a ball gown, right? To go, oh. Why am I so dark? I'm not wearing a ball gown, obvi, right? But <clears throat> I like to dress up, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. Okay, let me take this lipstick out. One day I had it in there just for touch-ups. I have so many lipsticks that now I'm like, let me just be putting my nudes in my bags. Just keep it there. Cause, girl, I need to put some liner. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> nudes and liners in my bags like let's just let it be a thing because there are just so many like i need to use them somehow all right in here do i have a nude this is a sigma pouch that just has lots of miscellaneous things inside of it got my fragrance got my business cards got do people use business cards anymore do you use them i use moo moo moo.com i'll link it below i just made these oops excuse me i made these business cards real simple nothing too crazy i love the shape of it and then I've got my contact and my socials on here. Because you never know. I mean, I don't use them often, but when I do, it's it's good that I have it. Okay, I have chapstick in here. I situation. I don't have a lippy. Let me find a lippy and okay. Let me find a lippy and a touch-up powder because, for instance, because on a day like right now when I was out, I would have wanted to touch up, like I said, right here from the shield that I was wearing. And I didn't have anything with me, so I need to make use of all of these things that I have. So I need a pressed powder. I mean, honestly, like any type of pressed powder should do. It doesn't need to be something specific. This look that I have on right now is very dewy. 
Okay, it's a very, very, I'm gonna take my CoverGirl, see this is what, it's big. Like CoverGirl powder foundation, and then what else did I wanna get? A nude lippy, I'm looking through my stash. This is my stash of stuff that I have not tried out yet. Hold on, let me put this down and show you what I'm, what I'm getting. I need to make use of the stuff that I have. Okay, so for instance, this is Buttercup Cream. Ooh, this is light. Whoa, when I touch up my lip, I don't want to go this light. Hold on. And obviously this is in the event that I'm wearing a nude lip, which usually I am. This could do. This is Boss Chick Cream Lipstick from Huda Beauty. I'm gonna put this in my purse. And then sometimes I need a brown liner or something. Just throw this in my purse. This is Appeal Cosmetics Gel Liner in the color Deep Topes. Just something brown to touch things up when I need to. And then I need to get a gloss because, for instance, today, if I were out and I wanted to touch this up, what gloss would I use? Let's grab that. This is a cute one. Sigma Lip Gloss in the color Lilac Wine. I could touch this up right now. Ooh, I like that it's a little brush. Instead of one of those wands, this will apply a lot of product at one time, yay. All right, and now here's the thing. I need some kind of a brush to touch up my nose. So I'm taking, the, I don't know how I'm gonna put this in my purse, man. That's, that's the, the part that gets a little annoying because you wanna get right in here to touch this up. So I'm taking this. Girl, I'm doing the most, but. This is, this is what it is, okay. I'm just touching into those areas. It's a powder foundation. It's going to give me coverage. You might still see the indent, which to me is fine. The world is not over if I still see an indent. I'm taking this small brush because it'll allow me to get in between my nose like so. I just did my makeup an hour ago. I'm not gonna blot anything down because my face is dry from my rosacea breakout. It is healing, but I want the hydration. This foundation is hydrating. This foundation is boom. I'm gonna link, I'm gonna link it below because you need it. You know? Ooh, I feel, I feel, I feel good. I'm annoyed. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I was just using this big mirror that I got on Amazon. It is huge. Here's my hand for reference. This thing is huge, honey. All right, you need it. It's so good. And then it has the magnifying situation on the back. I didn't even clean up my desk. That's how I was rushing. What do I have that I can put? I wish I, I wish this was short. I wish I had a cover. I'm annoyed. Okay, this is going to go in my purse. It's going to be just like standing up. I know it's not really standing up. Terry. It's going to just do what it's going to do right now. Put her right up in here so she's not contaminating other things. <laughs> Right inside, this is what this is for anyway. You have these pouches at home for when you get a gift set or the holiday, yeah, holiday gift sets and things. Go ahead, put your stuff up in here, baby, okay? Do it like that, baby, do it like that, okay? Give it a little zip. Now I have my touch-up kit in here and I got blotting sheets, which I barely use. Again, right now I'm like into the hydration because I need it. This mom commented me, commented on my fragrance. I was like, thank you, it's Georgia Armani my way. I know. Thank Alrighty, you. Here we are. Oh, let me show you this. This is two empties that I have. Moroccan Pear Camille Rose Conditioning Custard. This is really good. I was using it to co-wash. Really hydrating. I have two of these actually. I'm using one for Nini's hair and we love it. He, he says that it smells like Fruit Loops and it does. It really does smell like Fruit Loops. And this is done. I had this in my travel suitcase. This finished recently. Unscented. Clearly it's fragrance free. Hydrating. I still put a moisturizer on top of this. My skin is not the kind of skin where you can just do this and go sit down. You might have skin like that that is hydrated. Excuse me. Yeah, that is hydrated. Excuse me. Yeah. I got confused because, you know, hydration and moisturization are different. So you might have hydrated skin that doesn't require anything on top of this, but I definitely do. But I still enjoy it. It's just like skincare on your face. It's good to put a serum and then a moisturizer to give you extra, you know, extra oomph. All right. All righty. Let's go. <laughs> Na 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 go so na 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 go so na 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 hey you would think I know the words na 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 na
not available. I'm about to go get my hair done at the hair salon for the first time in like 15 years. It's been a long time. I know I exaggerate my numbers and stuff. I like to round up all the way up. Not just a little bit, just like all the way. You feel what I'm saying? But it has been quite some time. I'm getting a sew in. <laughs> I just want to wake up and be done. I don't want to wake up and put, put a wig on and lay my edges and all that. I know it's a little bit different. I don't plan on washing this hair because I don't like to do all of that. I don't like too much stress and muss and fuss. If I do wash it, I'll wash my leave out, which I'm accustomed to doing, but I'm not about to be washing a sew-in because you need to sit under the dryer and let it dry well. Otherwise, you're going to be mad, itchy, musty, just gross. I'm thinking two weeks, you know, is enough time to leave this in, and that's enough for me. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to see how it goes, but I'm thinking two weeks. I can't wait to get a side part because I haven't had a side part in ages and i love a side part on me you know i miss i almost thought to myself self what if i just relax the front of my hair that's try trifling but just so that if and when i do the leave out for the sew-in it like flows but that's so bad doesn't isn't that bad that's really bad i know it's bad you're gonna tell me it's bad i know that it is even the thought is bad you see i don't do styles with my natural hair like twist outs and things. So I'm not concerned about heat damage from the leave out. Cause again, I don't do twist out type styles to my natural hair. When I leave my natural hair out, it's either in a bun or a high poof for the curls. So I don't care if there's heat damage. I don't really care. I take care of my hair, but I don't, I don't worship my hair. So if there's damage or I gotta get it cut, it just is what it is. I don't care in that sense. But of course I do hydrate my hair and, and whatever. So yeah, I look forward to it and I'm gonna see how it goes. Again, I haven't had it in a long time. I hope it's not too tight. I hope it's not painful. I, I know back in the day, the braids used to be mad tight. I doubt it'll be. She's, she's a referral, so I think it'll be good. All right, I just shaved my face and my face and my skin looking and feeling good. Yeah. Have I told you the story about how when I was younger, I was in musical theater? Mm -hmm. I don't think we talked about that. I was in musical theater for, was it like three years? Or was it like four years? It was a while, you know, it was end of high school into college. And then I was just too busy with college and it was far away and I just, it was too much of a commute. But yeah, I was in musical theater. We can talk about that another time. But it, anyway, one of the songs that I was just singing reminded me of that. That's why I brought it up. Cause it reminded me of a song that we would sing in the play. I just did my whole face routine at the sink, so the showering is obviously obvi is separate, you know. All of those years that passed us by, all of those tears we both have cried. I really miss seeing you smile. I blame myself, although I tried, although I tried, I tried. When you realize that you get one life and you're going to get to 80, 90 years old, you're going to look back and say, damn, I lived a whole entire life of pleasing people that could care less about me, that wasn't there in my struggle. You won't say something because you're afraid what they're going to say back to you. You're afraid you're going to offend them. You're afraid they're going to disagree with you. That's selfish, my friends, because there's people in the world that need you to be the real authentic you. You, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not trying to, you know, step on your, actually, I am trying to step on your toes. The truth hurts, but it always helps. Come on. But I need you to get this. Because too many of us, we're living in prisons. We're living in prisons, not emotional me. prisons, not spiritual me. prisons, mental prisons. Because yeah. we're way too invested in what people think. Come on. There's strangers in the world that have unfair expectations of you, and there's yeah. people in your world that have unfair expectations on you. Yeah. Right? They have needs. They have people in your life that you don't know that they need. I like to say unspoken needs. You in. Unspoken needs that they put on your life that you have no idea about. So no matter how much you please them, no matter how much you do for them, no matter how much you say to them, no matter how much you silence your greatness, no matter how much, no matter how much, whatever you give will never be enough. Oh, oh my God. Your perfection. Hold on. This is Trent Shelton. Have you ever been there <clears throat> where you realized 
that someone had an expectation of you only when you didn't meet that expectation. So let's just say, for example, I don't know, you have a friend and she feels like, oh, well, you need to be some, I don't know, you need to, I don't know, be there for me all the time or whatever it is, right? And let's say one time you don't do it. And then she gets upset at you, like, well, you weren't there for me. You weren't da 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 da, da. And You're thinking, I called you. Like, what did you want? Maybe she wanted you to come over. I'm, that's a very simple example. What I'm going to say is, have you ever been in that position where you didn't realize somebody had a certain expectation over you until you did not meet that expectation? Then they wanted to beat you over the head about not meeting that expectation. It's like, yo, how old are you? Tell me what you're expecting. Because... If I don't meet that expectation because I didn't know, then I don't care if you're upset. I don't care. <laughs> because I didn't know, so fall back. Like, all right, you could express like, yo, I really needed this and that. Okay, fine, I understand that. But if you didn't tell me, and I genuinely did not know, you throwing a tantrum, it's not gonna affect me. It's not gonna make me move one way or the other. Or the other, in fact, it's irritating. <laughs> Just saying. Realize that. And I'm not saying you can't add some things to your life. You can't do better with your life, right? We all can. But you already been molded by the master creator. Why are you letting somebody else mold you? Going into Walmart to get some snacks for my hair appointment. I mean, not Walmart, Walgreens. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Here I am with Slim Jim. I just need something because I'm about to be hungry and perhaps some nuts. I'll just sell two plus cold food. Look at my hair. Ooh, girl. You better get me together, honey. Hold on. Ooh. Ooh, without the style. It already looks good. Oh. Ooh, my hair does look good. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Hello. Ooh, I'm about to be a so in freak. Looks oh my god. Wow. Oh my god, can you come to my house and do my hair every morning? Like, what is this? What? Oh my god, I might come for a refresh every week. <laughs> this is amazing. Baby, when I tell you we are not even on the same wavelength, like you were not even in my tax bracket, you were not even in my, like, you and I should never speak ever again in life, okay? That's how I'm feeling, like, don't even talk to me. Ah, do not speak to me. That's how I feel. Yo, now I understand the whole sewing situation. Like, who's where? Who where? Who where? I gotta clear my throat. My face is all dry from the mask. I gotta clear my throat. <laughs> like, what are we saying? What are we saying? What are you trying to say to me? What do you want to say to me? Just say it. You know what I'm saying? Just say it. Yo. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling it. I am sold. I get it now. I get it. You better get me a sewing now. You better go ahead and sew me in. I just love it. I wish I had a full face on right now. I'm angry. Like, why is my face not beat? This is the problem, you know? I'm a bad you must mama. I gotta always love you, baby, my mommy. You love me, my mommy. Hey. I'm a bad you must mama. Oh my god, so I'm back home and I love my hair so much. Like I cannot get over this. I cannot. The curls have fallen in a great way. This is long, honey. And this is my hair. I need to work on my edges. I just do, okay? I think we all do. I think every black woman is working on their edges. <laughs> every black woman. Enough. You know, but here, look at the hair. Look at the blend. Listen, my hair, praise God. When she's straightened, she is silky, okay? She is a very, very silky, all right? Take a look at it. You know what I'm saying? She's giving silk. She's giving fantastic blend. Even the color. Like, my hair is a... Red, orange, a two, yellow, dark brown. Blue. And this hair is a blue. natural two. And so it matches. Me, please. It matches so well. I love it so much, Naomi. Girl. Red. You have spoiled me. I told her, I said, wait a minute, I'm a convert now. I know I do my own hair. Me, please. I know I do my own Okay. I know I do my own hair, but I have not I have not had a side part in over a decade. You know, and I 
I know why red I've missed it because side parts look so red. good on me. I feel or so good. Go purple. I need you to stop right now. Side parts look so good on me. I just love this so much. I love my hair so much. I'm so irritated. Like I want to do my makeup, but it's 4.45. I'm not going anywhere. And I don't feel like filming right now. <sighs> Can't wait to just lay this down. Oh my God. I can put some, what's it called? Eyeshadow. I've seen people do that or that spray. She actually had it in her hand. I saw that. My husband has it. He uses it for his hairline. <clears throat> I could easily just do that, but I don't want anything that's going to be coming off when I touch it, you know, so whatever. I'm fine. I don't care about mine. My edges don't bother me at all, but I do know I need to work on them so they don't completely fall off. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I love it. If you get sew-ins regularly, comment and let me know what you think about them. Like, are you a lover of them? I have not had a sew-in in maybe 15 years. So I'm very, very, mm, like 12 years. So I'm very, very, I'm just mesmerized right now. I'm very mesmerized. You gonna see me with my hands in my hair all the time. Oh yeah, she gonna be in and out. You know what I'm saying? She gonna be in and out this head. I love my hair. Have I told you that I love my hair? If not, I wanna make sure I've told you that. My hair is like way down here. So she's like, good thing you got this length because your your natural hair is like down here. And I'm like, I know, right? It didn't even dawn on me. It did not dawn on me. So I have 24, 26, 26. It didn't dawn on me at all, but good thing I got it long. I can sit and I can sit in front of this camera all day. I can sit in front of the camera all day. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Goodbye. How does it feel to have a daughter who is this beautiful? It makes me feel happy. Yeah. Cause I, I mean I can imagine that you you wish that when you were younger you were also this beautiful. Yes? I have to tell you two things. Hey, and yes, some. The first thing is... But I just wanted to see, because I feel like, do you feel like when you were younger, you were as beautiful as me? Or do you feel like I'm more beautiful than you ever were? I I was more beautiful than you are right now. You I'm wish. You. you look like me. So don't ask me, even when I was younger, are you look more beautiful than you or you are more beautiful than I was. No. Are you, you sure I'm me. not more beautiful than you when you were younger? <laughs> Well, maybe growing up, but no. Then the man just is just a new moment, and yeah, you try to say you put Kobo to cry as well. Right. I just wanted to do a little survey because I know that I'm beautiful, and I mean, I know that you were young once. I just don't think that you were this fabulous. <laughs> and I just, I just want to establish that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what you think. Because when I'm your age, I'm going to look just like this, honey. You're going to look just like what you're doing right Just like this. Mm. Hey. Even, uh, even yeah. more beautiful. Oh, okay.